likes. So sometimes I, my hair is so curly right now. Sometimes I get really excited about something and I want to share it right away. And since I had this YouTube format, I thought rather than waiting until I've read the whole book, I thought I would just like address it like really fast what I've learned so far in case it's something that could be helpful for you. So I am reading C.K. Chesterton's The Everlasting Man, which was published in 1925. And it's about Jesus. And I'm literally in the introduction. And he's talking about religion and how you either have to be like fully in it, like being a Christian. And that's the best place to come from in terms of explaining the Christian faith, the church, and all that is being inside of Christianity. However, he said if you are not fully a Christian and really embracing it all, the second best place to be is so far removed that you look at priests and bishops the same way you would look at, well, he uses the word Chinamen, but like a Tibetan monk or um, an Egyptian god or whatever it is, like put Christianity and Catholicism on such a removed place that you don't have any more emotions tied up about the church or priests or anything that may like hang you up about Catholicism or Jesus in general because so many people are not Christians anymore. I just read yesterday that like one out of three people will leave will will turn their back on Jesus in their life. And it's a really startling statistic and I personally don't understand how someone knows about Jesus and knows about his love for us and his resurrection, I mean his death and resurrection and everything and the Last Supper and I don't understand how anyone can understand all that and then walk away from it. But the way Chesterton explains it is that you have all these people that are either like angry at the church or they're kind of muddled in their thinking or they've they've hung their hat on like one issue. He mentions the war and he talks about how um, all these atheists and liberals were saying that they had the answer to peace in terms like pretty much godlessness equaled peace. But then when the war came out, they turned around and blamed the church for not stopping it. And he was just he's pointing out the hypocrisy. You can't you know, and the church is sitting there going, well, of course there's war because men are sinful and that's why we need a church. And that's why we need a Jesus. And that's why we need the resurrection and you know, all that stuff. So I just wanted to take a minute to recommend this book. It's really good. Here, let me read this part to you. The point of this book, in other words, is the next best thing to being really inside Christian Christendom is to be really outside it. And a particular point of it is that the popular critics of Christianity are not really outside of it. They are on a debatable ground in every sense of the term. They are doubtful in their very doubts. Their criticism has taken on a curious tone, as of a random and illiterate heckling. Thus they make current and anti-clerical cant as a sort of small talk. And it just, it goes on and on, and I just, I'm like totally like in love with C.K. Chesterton. I've never read him before, but I know that he is somebody that a lot of Catholic homeschoolers encourage their children to read like later on when they get older. And I can totally see why. He likens it to a boy who lives on a house and he wants to go find a giant's, like some kind of giant's um, tomb or something. He walks away from the house far enough to realize that the whole time his house has been on the side of this giant's tomb or whatever and that all that he was seeking, he had been in it the whole time. But he couldn't see that when he was in the valley, when he was in between the house and that far away enough space. He had to kind of remove himself completely. Um, if you have read C.K. Chesterton, let me know. If you have a favorite C.K. Chesterton story, let me know. I have read some Father Brown stories and one of them was kind of like graphic and a little disturbing and so I kind of stopped because I was reading them before bed. They're like hard, more hardcore than Agatha Christie. If you have a favorite C.K. Chesterton quote or story or something else along the lines of like Jesus literature that you just love and has really um, for you confirmed Jesus. Again, like I don't even understand how someone's not confirmed in Jesus being their Lord and Savior and the Holy Trinity and I don't know. I don't know but I know there are people out there and my goal is to continue to speak about this thing, these matters, in order to perhaps sway one person to give the church or at least give Jesus a second chance. 
because Jesus loves us all. He died for us all, whether we believe him or not. I don't know what happens to anybody after this life, and that's what I'm not saying, but I know that Jesus holds me and carries me through the hard times and, re and rejoices with me in the good times, and the Footprints poem is one of my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite things ever because that moment where Jesus says, no, I was carrying you, that's true for everybody. Whether you are with Jesus or not, he's still gonna carry you and you just, you can tap into that comfort and that, that warmth and that embrace and there's nothing, oh my gosh, there's just nothing better. I'm gonna put below a meditation, so um, Catholics aren't supposed to do like meditation, like, you know, and like, it's all about me and my connection with the spirit. I mean like the universe, that's not okay because God's the only one who gets to do that. But um, you can do Christian meditations and there is one on Jesus' divine mercy and it is amazing. You literally leave the meditation feeling like your art heart is about to explode with love. It is just hands down like one of the coolest things I've ever done and probably should do it more often. So I'm gonna link that below because Jesus' divine mercy is real, his sacred heart is real, that's what we celebrated yesterday. Today we celebrate the Immaculate Heart of Mary, which is also just, you guys, she's our mother. Let's just acknowledge that. I really appreciate you listening to me. Again, let me know about CK Chesterton and um, I will talk to you again soon because the book club is still rolling and I do have other videos that I am planning on putting out in addition to the um, book club but that's a lot of filming, so we will see. And I'm really, really close to 500 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed yet, and you wanna support my channel, because that'd be really awesome, and I'm working my way up to 1,000, um, and then beyond, obviously, but that is like a huge mile marker with the way YouTube is rolling things nowadays. It used to be 100, and now it's 1,000, so. Um, if you wanna support my channel, Making sure to like my videos, but also to subscribe and to share is amazing. So I hope you have a blessed day and I will talk to you again soon. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.